In 2005, Google had a gross turnover of $6.1 billion and a net profit of $1.5 billion. Google makes his money by advertising. So if you think about consumers, a lot of consumers around the world go to Google and type something looking for something. They get a set of natural results. At the same time, there are people who have something to offer. So if I type mobile phones, I can get a natural result based on what's popular. At the same time, there are people who want to tell the consumer, listen, I have an interesting offer or interesting thing about mobile phones. So we, on the right side of our pages, have introduced the concept of advertising, which is done in a very democratic way, that if three people, A, B, and C, want to advertise, they bid against each other how much they want to pay to be the top advertiser. Now, we, to keep the consumer's interest in mind, we also track the relevance of the advertiser and say, well, A advertised even though he paid $1, and B advertised because he paid you know, 95 cents and C paid 90 cents, and it should be A, B, and C. Well, we'll check when we advertise against this keyword in this fashion, A, B, and C, is A getting a lot of clicks, is B getting a lot of clicks, or is C getting a lot of clicks? If C is the most popular, most relevant ad compared to that, we actually provide a balance between money and relevance. So that's, that means a furniture maker, for instance, with a small advertising budget could compete with IKEA or... Of course, uh, you can. If you believe you have a much better compelling proposition than somebody else, you can compete on a particular keyword by keyword basis. You don't have to buy the entire 30 seconds between the Super Bowl or the World Cup right. to be able to compete. So when I look at the Google employees, it's kind of funny because I went to school at Stanford uh, in the area. And when I joined Google, I started seeing a lot of my buddies from Stanford or people who live next door to me in the dorm rooms um, or professors even. So it, it's really kind of a, an extension of college in many ways. There's very smart people. Um, just the types of things that we do as far as the, the cafeteria setup, the, the gyms that we have, um, and also the culture of the people and the way that they like to work and the way that they're always working. They're working hard, they're playing hard, all at the same time, very similar to college. So that's kind of how I would describe it. Um, and, and the people are definitely one of the best parts of working here. Would you say uh, Google is employing the smartest people in the industry? I would think so. People now all over the world with lots of different means and methods into all kinds of jobs. Engineers, product managers, business operations, even chefs and masseuses. And we had the world puzzle champion working at Google. And we had people who really liked doing brain teasers and riddles. I've seen a photograph of a big billboard sign over a crossroad somewhere in, in mm -hmm. San Francisco. What was that all about? Well, interestingly enough, the, what happened was there was an equation where if you solved it, it gave you a series of numbers. And if you, so if you found the, that series of numbers and you typed it into uh, an internet browser, and I think, so if you did, typed it as www.thatsequenceofnumbers.com, it redirected you to the Google Jobs page. Mm -hmm. So for people who solved this cryptic riddle on the side of the road, they were then led to sort of a secret website that redirected them to Google Jobs, so then they knew and, and understood who was behind the billboard. It seems like a nice company, and American business students agree. After McKinsey, Google is the most popular employer. But one question remains. Just how honest is Google's search method? How watertight is this method? If I look for the truth about the Holocaust, I first find a denial about an indisputable historical fact. Whose truth are you seeing when you search with Google or any other engines? Google tries very, very hard to be um, uh, neutral with regard to opinion. Tries to be neutral. Tries to be neutral with regard to opinion. It doesn't, it does not apply an ideology to its rank ordering. Uh, it applies algorithms to the rank ordering, but those algorithms are intended to be as objective as possible. Uh, 
the Google results are very much bottom up. Whatever is there, is, and Google doesn't invent anything, so it, whatever it sees is whatever people have put onto the network. We don't produce our own information. So if we take 9-11 as an example, uh, it's possible that the conspiracy theory uh, might be the most popular uh, thing, that more people are busy talking about conspiracies than they are about the official reports that come out. Uh, and if that's the case, we're back to critical thinking on the part of the recipient, the searcher, uh, who has to decide which of the many uh, uh, matches on that search that particular person cares to look at and finds the most valuable. Can a search engine be objective? Can one point of view on all information be fair? Uh, no, by definition, not. Bruce Kale is resident of San Francisco. He founded the search engine Alexa, which he sold to Amazon seven years ago for $250 million. Kale is founder and director of the Internet Archive, a non-profit making organization aimed at ensuring digital information is freely available. Navigation through information is a very subjective thing. You can go and say, ah, oh, it's all going to be some big algorithm of the sky. It's just not true. There's decisions every step in the way when you're building search engines. What to crawl, what not to crawl, what to value more than others. Um, how popularist do you make it? How much do you have it reflect what other people have done as opposed to innately? What All of these things are, are baked into a set of computer algorithms. Could Google be, be biased if Google would want? Well, the attempt to introduce biases uh, is hard if those biases have to be algorithmically introduced for all possible information. This gets, I mean, mathematically hard. And second, I think there is a fundamental uh, belief within the Google community that uh, an unbiased result is the most important thing that we can offer to people and let, let each of the searchers decide for themselves which is uh, of interest to them. And as I said before, uh, trying to adapt these algorithms to work well on an individual basis so that we deliver that which is most relevant to a particular party is a very important part of our philosophy. Uh, and if Google remains uh, a very popular search engine, I think it will be because it was trying to be relevant to individuals as opposed to trying to um, assert that it has somehow discovered the truth. Our company's motto, if we have one, I would say is don't be evil. It's actually a good story. When we were small, we were mostly engineers. Uh, all the employees were engineers. When we hired our first business people, some of the engineers were really concerned about would that change the way we did business, and also would it change the types of products we built. Uh, and so there was an engineer named Amit who has very neat, tidy handwriting that I refer to as Patel San Serif, and uh, <laughs> that's his last name. And he decided that he would go and leave a note on the board for the business people, because he knew they had a business meeting where they were going to be trying to sell some of Google's products. So unbeknownst to the business people, he wrote in the lower corner of the whiteboard, don't be evil. So in the middle of the meeting, the business people spotted it and realized it was a note from Amit about how they, he wanted them to conduct the meetings. And uh, it just sort of stuck from that. How does that motto have a bearing on, let's say, the culture of the company? I think that it means that we feel that we can make money and have a successful business without sacrificing our ethics or our principles or the interests of our users. Google is now the world's most popular search engine. 
It has a market share of almost 60% and Google is still growing. I'm working on uh, machine translation, where then, uh, so the goal is to translate from uh, one human language into another human language. If right now you have, um, um, uh, you want to find out something and you type a query in Google, uh, and you might not find the answer just because uh, the, 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 uh, in, in 